Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today we're kicking off a very unique Let's Play on the channel. With Battle Brothers receiving an excellent new piece of DLC with Beasts and Exploration, I wanted to dive in head first. But, rather than simply play the game and what an excellent game it is, I thought I'd try something a little different. If you'd like to see more of it after you watch, let me know by dropping a like and a comment down below. But first... Grab an ale and have a seat, my good friend, for I have a tale to share. Not just any old tale, but a tale of brothers, of adventure and determination, of love and loss, and of beasts and exploration. A tale of Battle Brothers. The Knights Elite was a small mercenary band with no real claim to fame. At least, not where our story starts. In fact, we begin where any good tale begins, at rock bottom. It was an ill-fated day and a contract not worth the price in blood. Hogarth the Weasel, a brigand who had been terrorizing the local villages, needed taking care of, and after two days of tracking him and his troop, things went horribly wrong. Jokes about horses were cut short by the whistling of arrows, men were hollering and screaming, a great volume before death. It was an ambush. Hogarth the Weasel kept running, but a few of his men stayed behind to cut down the pursuers. The man in charge of the band of mercenaries, Captain Bernard, stepped forward in defiance, swinging his sword wildly. But a swift dodge and counterattack, and with the autumn leaves, the old captain of the Knights Elite fell. His assailant stepping over his body was insult to injury, and Heinrich let loose a wild bolt from his crossbow, immediately reaching for his quiver to reload. The opposing archer decided to fall back to safety. He'd have to be chased down later. Winric, the Hound they called him, and Burkhard both hurried to get in front of Heinrich. Eager fool that he was, the man was likely to get cut down as he stood steady and fired away. The brigands pushed forward, cautiously at first, but with Winric leaving an opening, one was able to get a good strike in. The Hound was a bit of a brute though, he cared little for the small cuts and bruises of battle. Heinrich hurried to the side, looking for an opening through which to loose his bolt. He'd tell no one that he'd missed his true target, but would instead take pride in squarely hitting the shoulder of the thug that cut down Captain Bernard. Winric gripped his axe with both hands and swung wide, and Burkhard, with little hesitation, dove into combat as well, thrusting his spear at the thug but cutting only air. The other brigand saw an opening, pushing his own spear against Burkhard. A quick pivot on his toes, and Burkhard blocked the strike with his shield. He smiled his cocksure grin at his assailant, but was too slow to respond to the second and third strike, both hitting him square in the chest, knocking the wind out of him. Winric found himself in a dire situation as well, unable to dodge strike after strike, and though Heinrich reloaded and tried his luck again, his bolt went wide of everything, hitting the grass behind his foes instead. Winric, tired and bloody, nearly beaten, felt it was time to end the fight. He split the man standing before him in twain, and as he stood to catch his breath, watched as Burkhard flashed his spear twice, once at the last thug's chest and then at his leg, piercing his hamstring and dropping the brigand to his knees. In a desperate attempt to take someone down with him, he thrust twice at Burkhard, hitting his shield at first, but managing to sneak a good strike in after. On his knees, off balance, and out of breath, the brigand bastard couldn't hear Heinrich reload and take aim. He certainly didn't know where death came from, only that it did. Burkhard and Winric would have to tend to their wounds, minor as they were. Heinrich, meanwhile, was able to catch his breath and pick up what little there was worth picking up. Ultimately, though it wasn't easy, the Knights Elite managed to survive the ambush. The company had been devastated, cut down to but a few men, and that bastard Hoggart did justice to his name, fleeing like the weasel he was. Among the wounded was the new captain of the Knights Elite. He had taken an arrow when the trap was sprung, and only now was he able to grit his teeth and break the shaft. Despite his pain, he knew he had to lead the company now. What now, Captain? Winric the Hound sat down beside his captain, bedding his bloodied axe on his legs. Bernard's dead, he went on. They slit his throat. He was a good man and a damned good leader, but all it took was one mistake. That mistake makes you the one in charge now, don't it? Heinrich joined the two, then Burkhard. Save the ceremony and anointment for another day. Let's give the men a good burial and return to Rheinberg to collect our pay. Burkhard didn't take a moment to sit. The Weasel's men are slain after all. Besides, Captain, we ought to see to that wound before we lose you too. Wouldn't want to leave Heinrich in charge, right? The men shared a smile, despite their grim reality. They had to bury too many friends today. About a half day's journey from Rheinberg, the woods would provide a decent resting place for their bodies. With the party toiling away through the night, the fallen brothers were buried with all the respects they were due, and with no time to rest, the captain decided that they must move immediately. 
It wasn't safe to travel these parts at night, and his men were already hurt. Rheinberg was a small town due west, nestled in the buried Snake Hills. It was hardly a village, more a hamlet than anything else. Some huts and small houses for the miners toiling away nearby, a small marketplace and a taxidermist of all things. As the sun rose over the horizon, the outskirts of Rheinberg came into view. Peasants making their way to the nearby farms strolled by the weary travelers, muttering under their breaths, staring with curiosity. It wasn't long before the haggard bunch arrived at the town, and what a sorry display it was for the onlookers. Four bloodied and beaten mercenaries, down on their luck. Without a doubt, their patron Conrad the councilman had expected a more glorious return, but even in this sorry state, the party was welcomed into his home. Bread, wine, and a healer were brought forth, and as the captain sat and had his wounds tended to, Conrad asked for the status of Hoggart. We killed his men, but the weasel eluded us in the end. The captain spoke through clenched teeth as the healer finished off the last few stitches. The healer then reached for his fire poke, waving it around as a half-question, half-warning to the captain. With a nod from him, the fire poke was pushed against the wound to cauterize it, and after a moment of immense pain, there was wine to alleviate it. You did well, Selsword, Conrad spoke as he handed the goblet over. The brigands have been removed, though it's a shame that Hoggart still lives. The captain placed the goblet gently to the side, turned to face the councilman, and made his stance clear. We expect to get paid for this. His voice offered no room for negotiation. The councilman, taken aback, gestured to a nearby servant. Well, naturally, 400 crowns as agreed upon. The young boy ran over, coin purse in hand. Weighing the purse in his hand, the captain stood to leave, but Conrad wasn't done with the night's sleep yet. I wonder, he feigned hesitation. May I make use of your services one more time? I'd very much like to end the headache that is Hoggart once and for all, and I would pay you again, of course. Another 400 crowns, shall we say? Winric simply scoffed and returned to his wine, but Burkhard stood and spoke. Yes, the company is in ruin, but we will rebuild it. Without the knight's elite, Winric the Hound would drink the crowns away and end up begging on the streets, and Heinrich, by the gods, we all know he'd go chasing the women folk until one stove his rotted head in. We need the knight's elite, it's all we have. What say you, Captain? Winric burped and raised his goblet to the captain while Heinrich nodded, thumbing his nose. Kill that bastard or not, it's up to you, captain. With vengeance and money on the line, the captain had an easy decision to make. He nodded, looked to his men, and made his intentions very clear. Yes, we have unfinished business with Hoggard. Conrad clapped his hands, satisfied. Excellent, my little birds will need some time to find where Hoggard is hiding his hide now. The councilman began to walk away from the mercenaries. In the meantime, I suggest you see about stocking up on supplies so that you'll be good and ready to end this when the time comes. I shall see you in a few days' time at the latest. The captain and his men left promptly. There wasn't much to do now but wait. Still, a little battered and bruised, the men would need their rest, but Burkhard had other plans. Taking the captain aside, he said what everybody was thinking. We need more men, captain. I know I gave a big speech back there, but bravado won't do shite. We need more warm bodies in the ranks. Figure we find three good men, buy them some decent weapons, and dress them in the best armor we can afford. Pausing, he glanced around. I bet this Bodunk town's got a desperate peasant or two looking for a new life. Or we could travel to Grubenheim in the north. Them city folk aren't always as hardy as these country bumpkins, but we're more likely to find men with fighting experience stopping to rest there. The captain nodded. Aye, that's what we'll do. Leaving Rheinberg right away would be a foolish move. A mining town was bound to have a strong-armed man or two willing to risk life and limb for loot and adventure. There was a sorry lot drinking and resting in the sun, most likely looking for a change of pace in life, some likely looking for a change of pace for the day. A miner and a mason caught the captain's eye at first, but a man off to the side wearing more armor than any of the others was of particular interest. Wiggled, he called himself. He wouldn't come cheaply, but as a grave robber run off by a mob, the man was somewhat desperately in search for a new vocation. He also claimed the potentially Spartan life of a mercenary bothered him none. An easy hire. The only other man of note was Bertwin. He wasn't particularly special until he introduced himself as Bertwin Orkbane. With a name like that, he'd likely be a good ally on the battlefield, and though he was a grave robber as well, the captain had faith enough that this man was truly an enemy of the Greenskins. Though. Bertwin did seem to be a little short-sighted, which had the entire band of brothers wondering if he was Bertwin Orkbane or perhaps Bertwin Treebane. 
With nobody else of interest among the lot, the brothers marched over to the nearby marketplace in search of whatever weapons and armor might be used to arm their new compatriots. A pitchfork for Wigan and a hatchet and wooden shield for Orkbane. With the hopes of finding another addition, the party left Rheinberg and prepared for the tedious march north to Grubenheim. A large city nestled against the mountains by the collapsing hills, the city was surrounded by salt mines, workshops, and farms. The march north was largely uneventful, but as the skyline appeared in the distance, Heinrich sought a word with his captain. Never been to Grubenheim before, but I've been around ones that look a lot like it. Cities like these are great for selling goods, as all these prissy, pompous pricks love to have their goods delivered. With so many merchants, you can find almost everything you need, too. Keep an eye out for bargains, and don't get swindled by them cutthroat merchants. Winrick the Hound chimed in with his own opinion. If there's a good tavern, I say that's where we should go first. Nothing helps a man down on his luck more than a good pint. God knows we earned it. Heinrich shook his head. You say that every time we stop into town. You say that even when you're already drunk. The captain nodded. I'll keep that in mind, he said, and he knew Winrick wasn't wrong. A cold pint would help the brothers think of something other than the friends they'd buried only a handful of hours ago. After all, money was made to be spent, and the sun was starting to set as they neared the city. The militia seemed on high alert, and there were mutterings of a Noxera prowling in the mountains, but that was of no concern to the party in their current state. As they headed towards the tavern, a drunken man in padded leather armor caught the captain's eye. Heinrich called the man a drunkard and suggested they continue, ironically, to the tavern, but the man proclaimed, I'm not a drunkard, my good sirs. I'm merely alcoholically inclined. A good way to be, as far as the captain and Winrick were concerned. And as it turned out, Ralph was the sole survivor in an ambush. He was escorting a caravan that was struck by brigands. Seeing that he might die either way, the drunkard figured he'd at least die rich if he opted for life as a mercenary instead. It was an easy enough hire to make, compared to the rest of the sorry lot that was resting by the markets, and what little money was left could be used to arm this man with a hatchet and a shield. At least he wouldn't need new armor. With little time to waste, eager to continue the chase after Hoggart, the captain was quick with the barkeep. Ignoring all the chatter about the room, he ordered a round of drinks for the company. We've lost many good friends today, and we are like to lose more in the days to come. He didn't know how to be reassuring. But those of us who live on must remember to work and kill and drink all the harder to make up for our friends who no longer can. As lackluster as his first pep talk as captain was, the party raised their pints and drank. Heinrich and Burkhardt were pleased. Winrich simply wanted more. But the captain knew better. They had to move quickly, especially if there were Noxera in the area. Walking past the weaponsmith, the market, and the desperate souls looking for work, the Knights Elite made their way back to Rheinberg. The sun set shortly after they were on their way, and though the men marched on for hours, it was close to midnight when their wounds, drunkenness, and fatigue got the better of them. Setting up camp for the night, they would work away at repairing their weapons and armor, and hope to rest and recover from their bruises before morning came. Rheinberg was just over the horizon, but the distance seemed insurmountable at the time. At the crack of dawn, the party began to move again. It wouldn't take them long now, and much to their pleasant surprise, Conrad had made progress as well. When they arrived, the councilman was pacing back and forth, and the healer who had damn near killed the captain just the day before was picking chunks of dried blood out of his fingernails. Conrad clapped his hands, as he was prone to do. Finally, you're here! I have good news! We got a hold of one of Hoggart's former men. My good friend here had a nice little talk with the man, and now I know where Hoggart's licking his wounds. The healer cleared his throat, splaying his fingers out like a maiden looking to paint them. He spoke as though he were identifying a disease he was about to excise. The brigand, known as Hoggart, is hiding in a small hut on the plains to the southeast of here. Based upon my most civil discussion with one of his men, Hoggart knows the Knights Elite are on his heels and will have gathered more men since the last time you met him. Nodding, Conrad waved the party off. Good luck, Salsword. Satisfied with the information, the captain ordered his men to get ready immediately. We'll return with his head, he thought to himself. Hoggart's hideout was an abandoned homestead over the hills. A collapsed roof and some overgrown vines made it look completely unoccupied, and it served as an excellent hideout. Till now, thought the mercenary captain. Coming around the hills, the sun was relentless even on this somewhat cool autumn day. Driven by the desire for vengeance, the troop marched on, describing the many different ways they would brutalize Hoggart's body when they finally met him. By noon, the hideout was in plain sight, and Heinrich went ahead to scout, finding a few thugs and a poacher among the lot. 
The brothers came prepared, and without any hesitation, the captain ordered his men to engage. Heinrich, always quick to move, took the high ground immediately. It's over, Hoggart! I have the high ground, he yelled, letting loose a bolt, piercing the side of one of Hoggart's thugs, making it clear what the Knight's Leet intended to do here today. Hoggart, for once in his life, charged forward, sword and shield at the ready. His poacher loosed a wild arrow. Wiggled moved forward quickly, eager to prove himself to his new friends, and Berkwin followed suit, raising his shield as two of the thugs rushed towards the pair. Winric pushed to the right flank, and Ralph rushed the center, hatchet at the ready, cutting down the first thug within his alcoholically inclined reach. The last of the thugs pushed ahead, and Burkhard responded by filling the gap between the hound and the drunkard, raising his spear in preparation. Heinrich reloaded quickly and took aim at the thug nearest to him. Despite the clear shot he had, at the last moment, Heinrich decided he took issue with the poacher and loosed a bolt that landed uselessly between the two. Wiggled, despite his range advantage with a pitchfork, dove off his mound and cut at the nearby thug's legs, puncturing his right calf with an effective thrust. The hound, eager not to be outdone, charged through the bushes before him and swung his axe with full force, cutting a huge gash in the cheek of the man before him, knocking his cap clean off. Hoggart stepped forward, deftly swinging at Wiggle's head, punishing the man for his hubris. Winric dodged a quick thrust to his head, but caught off balance, he wasn't able to dodge the poacher's arrow that hit him square in the chest. To the side, Ralph swung at Hoggart's shield, hoping to break it. It splintered and cracked on the second strike, but it was Bertwin whose strike finally shattered it to pieces, swinging a second time without thought, missing the weasel by a mile. Wiggle took a pickaxe to the head. How his skull hadn't cracked open, nobody knew. How he managed to dodge the second swing was a sheer miracle. Meanwhile, Burkhard stepped over the brigand body before him and thrust at Winric's assailant, cutting only air. Heinrich quickly took aim and cursed himself as soon as he'd loosed, knowing his shot would go wide. He felt useless. Wiggle took a cut from Hoggart's sword, barely managing to dodge the second swing, vision blocked by blood. Winric took a brutal stab to the arm, and though he momentarily wished for the sweet embrace of death, he retaliated with an upward swing of his axe, cutting his attacker almost clean in half from the crotch up. As his guts spilled, the other brigands contemplated surrender. Winric, driven by bloodlust, considered charging the poacher momentarily, but then quickly leapt back as the poacher let loose a quick shot that would have brought the hound down. Wiggle stabbed the man before him, a little dazed from the constant onslaught. Hoggart was alone on the front line, wavering now. Bertwin ready to strike. His first swing was dodged, but the second cracked Hoggart's mail. Ralph followed quickly, striking Hoggart's chest and then cutting a gash down his calf as he hobbled backwards. Burkhard stabbed the bastard in the shoulder, but somehow missed his second thrust. And Winric was eager for blood once more, but as he moved forward, he saw the poacher's arrow strike Burkhard on the side and saw Wiggled wildly swing his pitchfork at Hoggart. Bertwin followed up with a wild swing of his own, but pivoting swiftly on his toes, he brought a second swing of his hatchet down on the weasel's neck, felling him instantly with a satisfying pop. The party chased after the poacher, though Winric fell back, thinking the poacher was surely done for. Heinrich charged forward, loosing the wild bolt, and then fell back again. The poacher retreated, but Wiggled gave chase, as did the rest of the company. The battle was over, but the captain made it clear. The brigands were all to die. And so the men gave chase, Winric included, hobbling as he was. Heinrich reloaded when he could, following his brothers forward. The charge went well, and Wiggled, eager as he had been to prove himself, finally had the poacher cornered. Running forward in leaps and bounds, he barely saw the poacher put away his bow and pull out the club with which he took a crack to the ribs. Burkhard closed the gap just behind Wiggled, and the rest of the brothers moved closer too. Wiggled dodged two swift blows of the poacher's club and retaliated with a great stab into the brigand's shoulder. Ralph pushed up around his friends to gain the high ground and with a great heave brought his hatchet down on the poacher, bringing the battle to a bloody end. They'd all performed admirably, brothers new and old. Wiggle had taken the bulk of the hurt, but Winric had to hold his arm closed where the cut had cleft his skin, a pain that would be dulled by copious amounts of drinking later. As most of the party took a moment to rest on the bloodied field, the unharmed Heinrich and Ralph went about collecting what could be collected, gold, weapons, food, and tools. A decent haul. The best part of the haul would be the weasel's head. Hoggart lay in a pool of his own blood, skewered in a grotesque and panicked pose. He hadn't weaseled his way out of this one. The captain, with great pride, put his boot on the corpse and announced, For the company, for all the men who have fallen, Heinrich spat on the brigand's bloodied head. Let's take this bastard's head and get back to Rheinberg. Cutting through the buried snake hills, the party was eager to return to Rheinberg that night. Drinks were in order, and some rest would go a long way. J. 
Just as the sun set, the company arrived, victorious, heads held much higher this time. The Knights Elite were perhaps not as large as they once were, but they were still a force to be reckoned with. Hogarth learned that in his final moments. Conrad was able to recognize the severed head easily enough, and the healer seemed to approve of the work done here as well. Servants, Conrad yelled, pay this man his money. Leaving with coin in hand, the captain took a moment to celebrate what had just come to pass. As long as there is blood coursing through our veins, as long as we can hold sword and shield, there shall stand our company. All through the realm, people will know the Knights Elite. The men cheered, and Burkhardt put a hand on the captain's shoulder. You did well, Captain. The reassurance meant a great deal. No matter where you lead us, the men will follow you as brothers in battle. And that meant a great deal more. Heinrich purchased for himself a new bow and arrows to go with it, and while Winric tended to his wounds, he could tell his brutal experience left him a more capable fighter. A big brute of a warrior, each battle only made him stronger, as is said about things that don't kill a man. While some of the others gathered supplies, the captain went to speak with the councilman in search of more work. As luck would have it, there was work to be found. Conrad was seated when the captain walked in, he was pointing at a bird perched upon a nearby windowsill. I wonder if that's how they got in. The brigands, I mean. I think they must have snuck through a window and then snuck right back out. That's how they got away with my demonic statuette. The man rose and stalked his way over to the bird. He crouched, as if readying to pounce on the bird, but the creature scattered before the man could so much as flinch. Damn. He returned to his chair, wiping his hands as if he'd worked up a sweat during his attempted avian ambush. My task is simple, Selsword. Bring my property back to me. Kill the brigands too, if you wouldn't mind. Let's talk pay. The captain was intrigued. Gesticulating with his hands, pointing at his fingers as if counting something, though it meant nothing to the captain, Conrad began. Judging from experience, this is good payment for the task. You are to receive 310 crowns when the contract is done. Considering a very similar task just netted the company 800 crowns in two separate payments, the captain pushed. We need to be paid more for this. Conrad raised his hand. No, nope. this is my final offer. You are to receive 310 crowns when the contract is done. Begrudgingly, but out of desperation, the captain accepted the terms. The pay would barely cover the cost of supplies, but if spent judiciously, it may be worth it. There were tracks that could be followed, headed west. The Knights Elite were to follow them and retrieve the demonic statuette. A simple enough task. The captain contemplated bringing more men into the fold. It was slim pickings, but... Considering the state his men were in, especially Winric, it would be a good idea to bring another man at least on board. Grimald, the miner with the annoying tendency to point out the importance of miners, would have to do. With some better armor, he'd be decent enough for now. With that, it was time to seek a place to rest for the night. With the sun rising on a new day and the company readying to leave, the captain gathered his men. Kicking Wiggled awake and telling Grimald to finish scraping away the hairs on his neck later, it had finally truly dawned on him that he was in charge now, and the first order of business was to let the realm know that the Knights Elite were still in business. As the sun rose, alighting his face with a warm, basking glow, he spoke. We shall get the company's strength back to a dozen men. It will make us a formidable force again and will allow us to take on more profitable work. The men nodded in agreement. Aye, Captain, Heinrich yelled out. The rest of the men followed suit. Aye, they all yelled as brothers. And as brothers, the company moved. The tracks headed west were still fresh, and there was little time to waste. Heinrich was scouting ahead, as he always did, and as the party left the road behind, Heinrich began complaining of a distant but strong stench. Something wasn't right, he said. He peered into the woods by the Heart Song's range and swore he saw something pushing through the trees. It wasn't long before... Naxera! Naxera! Back to Rheinberg! Heinrich yelled, sprinting down the hill from where he saw the foul beast approaching. The party was in no condition to fight such a terrifying fiend. Burkhard tried to help Winric, who still had his arm held together by cloth. Wiggled was exhausted and battered, armor was still dented, blades were still dull. The Knights Elite fled. They fled as fast as they could. They took the road as far back as possible. Not wanting to attract the beast to the town, they turned to the hills. The beast gave chase. Glancing back occasionally, the captain could smell death and doom approaching, closing the gap. Finally, he knew there was no point in fleeing. The Knights Elite would stand. The Knights Elite would fight. <laughs>